Hey, what's up YouTube? It's been a while since I've made a video, I feel like, but um, yeah, I mean, after getting back from Japan, I feel like I need to make a video where I talk about my experience over there, um, all that good stuff. So basically, this is going to be a video, kind of audio version of my blog post, which is over on my website, which I'll post a link to down in the description. But uh, yeah, I just arrived back in the States about th three, two or three weeks ago um, from going over to Japan for two weeks um, with my cousin and his fiance. And in that trip, we went to uh, Tokyo, we went to Kyoto, we went to Osaka, and we went to Hiroshima. Um, so I'm hoping this will be kind of like useful to some people that are planning a trip to Japan. So I'm going to talk about like where I stayed and how I got around and stuff. Um, but in general, I noticed that when I was, you know, going to Japan, coming from America, people seemed friendlier overall and more patient. The streets seemed a lot cleaner. Um, the transportation was super efficient. Even the toilets over there were actually really impressive. I mean, they had like heated seats and all kinds of buttons and features and stuff, and it's pretty high tech. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna miss the heated seats. But yeah, I mean, two weeks was just long enough to really kind of get, I guess, what I'd call a condensed experience of Japan, um, where I really felt like I kind of experienced what it's really like. But I mean, it's just like a taste. It's like a sample, and I. It really left me wanting more, so I'm definitely planning to go back in the future. I'd like to visit other countries first, um, and other places in America first, but I definitely want to go back to Japan. I don't know if I would want to live there or not, and that's kind of another reason I took this trip, was to see if it'd be a place I would want to live. But honestly, I'm not really sure yet if I would ever want to do that. But yeah, so when I first arrived, we arrived in Haneda Airport. Um, it did feel, it felt a bit overwhelming. Just, you know, how foreign everything was, all the signs. There was a lot of English signage, but it felt like a lot of the signs were just in Japanese. Um, just, you know, wasn't really sure where to go, you know, which desks to go to to get the Wi-Fi, all that kind of stuff. But um, there are information desks there and the people there are really nice and friendly. and really willing to help you. Um, but I couldn't get into my email on my phone when I first arrived because I was overseas and I thought I wasn't really who I was, so it wouldn't let me in. And all the text on the site was in Japanese even. So I wasn't really even able to look up like my Wi-Fi confirmation number stuff in my email. But luckily I had it written down, so make sure you have you know anything you book, any addresses you need, Anything that would be in your email, make sure you have all that information written down. Flight times, flight numbers, whatever. Um, because there's a good chance you might not be able to get into your email. Um, but yeah, so I had reserved things like mobile Wi-Fi through Japan Rail Pass website. Which, that's another thing about transportation there is um, Japan Rail Pass is something I got because I was going from Tokyo to Kyoto. So if you're traveling a long distance, the Japan Rail Pass might actually be worth it to you. <clears throat> but something to look into. But another thing I had already booked on Japan Rail Pass site as well was what's called a Suica card, S-U-I-C-A. And basically that's just a card you put money on at like an ATM-like machine, a ticket machine. And uh, yeah, basically you just swipe it when you go through the gate and um, it lets you through. You don't have to buy a ticket for each trip, which would be very annoying and probably confusing. I also, you know, took some cash and exchanged it at the cash exchange desk. Also, my um, my debit card worked totally fine there at the international ATMs, which you can find in like every 7-Eleven and in the airports to withdraw cash in yen. Um, so I got my currency exchanged, got my Wi-Fi, put money on my Suica card with the cash that I brought and 
then we just made our way um, to the monorail, which wasn't really difficult to find. So we took the monorail from the airport to um, Shibuya Station because we were staying in Shibuya, an area of Tokyo. It was pretty straightforward. Once we got to Shibuya Station, it got a little more confusing because it's a huge station. I mean, you're not sure which direction to walk, but honestly, Google Maps is what I really recommend. Um, if you just put in your destination, Google Maps will tell you which platform to be on, which train to take, which line to be on. And if you're still unsure, just ask someone at a ticket gate and they'll usually be able to help you. Um, but, you know, when it comes to asking for questions, it's another thing that when you talk about communicating with people. That is not too difficult, honestly, in the city. But when I was going over there, people were like, Oh, their um, their English was pretty good, so I was thinking, oh, okay, in the city they're gonna be speak English fine. But no, that's really not the case. I mean, the English that I experienced in Tokyo even was very limited. Sure, you had a few people that spoke pretty good English, but a lot of people, even people at restaurants that were serving you, knew just enough English to take your order, and they could barely like communicate outside of that. Um, you pretty much had to point to what you wanted on the menu and stuff like that. Um, so honestly, it's it's good to learn a few basic phrases before you go. I really recommend that um, at the very least. So as far as accommodations go, <clears throat> in Tokyo, I stayed at the Wise Owl Hostel in Shibuya. I definitely highly recommend the Wise Owl Hostels. I think there's two of them in Tokyo. Um, the smaller one is in Shibuya, but really nice people, comfortable beds, nice showers, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, the one I stayed at was in Shibuya, so it was not too far from things that I wanted to just walk to. I didn't have to worry about the last trains of the night or whatever. And then in um, Kyoto, I stayed in the Koto An, which isn't, it's like a traditional style inn. Don't really recommend it. I mean, it's cool to have the experience of like a traditional inn but that that inn the heat didn't really work very well um so during the winter it wasn't that great maybe in the spring or in the fall it wouldn't be too bad but yeah and then in osaka uh we stayed in what's it called heart on hotel shinsaibashi which was actually a nice hotel um and it was in, in a good area shinsaibashi is right next to America Village, and so there's a lot of nightlife right there. There's restaurants, there's shopping, there's all kinds of stuff right there. And it's really fairly close to the train station as well. So some people are gonna say, you know, oh, Japan's pretty expensive. And honestly, I thought, yeah, it was kind of expensive, but it wasn't like insane. I thought like <clears throat> I had plenty of money the whole time. As long as you're not going out drinking every single night, not going to super fancy restaurants and you're smart about how you travel and don't take taxis, um, you'll probably be alright. Um, but yeah, as far as like the food goes, some restaurants I really recommend are places like Uobe Sushi in Tokyo, which is kind of like bullet train sushi. It's quick, but it's good. It's affordable. Coco Curry House, really good Japanese curry. Um, I fell in love with that. Uh, let's see, Sukemasa and Kyoto for gyoza, I got hooked on those. And then um, if you're into craft beer, also Spring Valley Brewery in Tokyo, and they even do food pairings there and stuff. But yeah, so lastly I just want to mention like some nightlife stuff. Um, so in Shibuya, in Tokyo, there's a bar called Hub, which is where you're going to find Japanese people as well as foreigners all going to the same bar to meet each other. So that's a pretty cool place, kind of expensive though, but you're gonna find a lot of English speakers in that bar, um, or people that wanna meet English speakers. And then in Osaka, I really recommend Far Plane if you wanna go to like a really weird place. Um, it's kinda like a kink bar, honestly, but it was a lot of fun. And then if you're really into craft cocktails, Nayuta Bar in um, Osaka is really nice too. Um, and those are both pretty close to the hotel I stayed in. 
So that's about it for time on this video, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm going to link to my blog post in the description, which I'll have a little more detail, I think. But yeah, thanks for listening.